My first question to you, Heather, is how would you describe Mushmina? We're creative people and we created a business really to employ and empower women. If I could help someone in Ghana create a market for their artisan products, like that's where I felt like my real calling was. You were talking about it earlier as a passion, you know, for women empowerment. And now you're acting like as a businesswoman, you know, with a with a business plan. Did, did you think that in the middle there was like a market gap? Did you see an opportunity there? It was more on a whim. It was more like I'm an artist and a designer and I wanted to help. And I have this interest in international development. You know, work with people that, that have different skills than you. I think my sister and I, one of our challenges is that we're both designers. So we're more coming from the arts perspective than business. So there are a couple of things I wish I would have done, like built a team, gotten investors. You know, we didn't do that. We did it like a bootstrap, small business style. That was like our first big risk because, you know, it's like buying a car to get into those shows, like 15,000 for the booth for a month, a big risk for a small business. I think that we, we did borrow money at some point, you know, from friends and family to, to finance some of these shows. But how do you have that kind of mentality and mindset to be willing to take the risks and be ready to lose the money. Being an entrepreneur is a certain personality. As you know, you know, it's not for somebody that likes stability. I mean, I really have moments where I miss having a paycheck, <laughs> you know, I would build a team of people like my husband, like who's very business minded, very calculated. He's an engineer, math driven. I think I, I, like, I would hire that person, you know, to like Sabra pillows that are really popular. This was from a rug order that the color was just slightly off. So we made pillows. Oh, so when things are not really going your way, you know, and I suppose that happens quite a lot, you know, as a, any entrepreneur, how do you deal with the situation? How do you manage yourself first? Just change the way you're framing something. You want to start a business. He said, don't, don't do it for the money. He said, if you want to make money, go work for someone else. You'll probably make more money, at least the first decade you will. But he said, it's a marathon and you need to be willing to run it. In my house, so this is our clothing over here. This is my small line. Um, the studio is in my house. So, and my advice to them and their advice to me is like, we have to just stay present, like just be, be in today. Because it's it's sort of hard to plan like what tomorrow looks like, you know, given all the challenges that we just went through. In the year of pause, it just made me look at like where is the value in the business and what are my what can I bring to add value to people's lives, not just more fashions pursuing this path. I would say like you need that network, you know, drum up that network before you like really dive in completely. Mm. I mean, do it at the same time, maybe.